Hello friends, welcome to yet another session on this immunization series and on today's session we will be talking about typhoid vaccination. Okay, firstly why this vaccination, what is the importance of this vaccination coming to the introduction. As we all know the etiology for typhoid and paratyphoid fever is salmonella typhi for typhoid and one more very much mimicking typhoid fever and it is almost not indistinguishable from typhoid fever is paratyphoid fever and that is caused by salmonella paratyphi a b and very rarely from c okay and the capsular polysaccharide antigen that is used virulence by capsular polysaccharide antigen is secreted from salmonella typhi it is not secreted it is present in the cell wall of salmonella typhi and salmonella paratyphi c so the vaccine that is there gives protection for salmonella typhi and paratyphi c but no protection is offered against paratyphi a and b okay and c as it is it is very rarely causes the disease okay so the main protection is offered against the typhoid fever and not the paratyphoid fever and that is why many of the recent trials are going on to develop a vaccine that gives protection against typhoid as well as the paratyphoid fever okay now coming to the incidence of the disease as it is india is one of the main hotspot for the disease in, and including other including other developing countries but when it comes to india it is one of the main region and highly incident countries and the second reason is it mainly affects children aged below 15 years okay so maximum population is children aged below 15 years and of that less than 5 years include around 25% and 5 to 10 years is around 40% and 10 to 15 years is around 40% among the age group affecting less than 15 years and one more reason is why do we give this vaccination early in the childhood is this less than 5 year age group also accounts for one fourth of all the cases and one more reason, reason is the death rate is almost 10 times higher in this children okay so the incidence is around 11 to 21 million cases yearly with 1.5 lakh deaths maybe most of the disease are in the developing countries and that is why most of these us and uk travelers end up getting disease on traveling to these countries and india is one of the main hotspot for typhoid fever okay case fatality rate is one to four percent but when it comes to children younger than 4 years, the rate of complication as well as the case fatality rate is almost 10% higher. Okay. Now coming to the types of vaccine. Let's see the type of vaccine. This typhoid vaccine was introduced as early as in 1890s. Okay. So it has been present since a very long time. Okay. And this one of the first vaccine to be introduced was whole cell inactivated vaccine okay whole cell inactivated vaccine but later on this was stopped because of the adverse reaction associated with it and then came the virulence capsular polysaccharide antigen so the capsular polysaccharide named virulence taken from the cell wall was extracted and made vaccine from it okay and but the disadvantage being the polysaccharide vaccine it couldn't give long-term immunity one and it could not be given to children less than two years that is when came the conjugate vaccine was developed and there is one more live attenuated vaccine as well but we will not talk much about it because it is not yet licensed in india for its use okay so very few points about whole cell inactivated vaccine not used anymore because of the high rate of adverse events as already told and it used to have moderate efficacy with around 51 to 88 percent and protection lasted up to seven years okay and very few points about the live attenuated vaccine is it is oral vaccine available as capsules and each capsule contains around 2 into 10 to the power 9 organisms and age group given is around 4 to 7 years and it is given as day 1 capsule day 3 day 5 and 1 booster is given followed by a booster but it is not licensed for use in india so we will not discuss much about this as well this was few salient points about the first two types of vaccine now coming to the main vaccine that we are giving in india is the 
virulence capsular antigen okay so of this one is the polysaccharide vaccine okay one is the the same thing is made uh, what attached with the protein and made into a conjugate vaccine okay so this again first was developed in us under nicht okay national institute of childhood health and diseases and it was conjugated with exotoxin a of pseudomonas aeruginosa okay later on in india our bharat biotech as well developed this same polysaccharide vaccine conjugated with tetanus toxin and it came to be known as typhiban tc v tetanus conjugated so typhoid conjugated vaccine okay and after that there are around more than five to six licensed vaccines and one of the most recent edition as we have already discussed was in 2021 was the conjugate crm197 typhoid vaccine vaccine or typhoid biological e vaccine this is one more recent edition okay so there are many licensed vaccines that can be used but since most of the trials and most of the of us are going and using this typhi bar tcv we will discuss about this okay so okay let's start one is the polysaccharide second one is the conjugate vaccine which is nothing but we'll be discussing about the one developed by bharat biotech typhi bar tcv okay so type coming to the type it is both contain purified antigenic uh, fraction of virulence polysaccharide of salmonella typhi okay and this same thing is conjugated with tetanus toxide over here coming to the dosage it is 0.5 ml and the content content is the same both contains 25 micrograms of purified polysaccharide antigen in 0.5 ml only difference is this is conjugated with tetanus toxide okay it is given as im site is im both uh, need to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees celsius since it is polysaccharide vaccine it should never be frozen and this polysaccharide vaccine when stored at 37 degrees celsius can be used for 6 months and when stored at 22 degrees celsius it can be used for 2 years whereas this conjugate vaccine it comes with the vaccine vial monitor so an indicator is already present with the vaccine okay efficacy no when do we tell it is effective when the anti vi antibodies anti virulence antibodies is more than 1 micrograms per ml okay that is when it becomes effective and what about the efficacy of the vaccine one of the disadvantage of the polysaccharide vaccine as we all know is the since it cannot go and affect the memory t cells since they are not produced or it cannot since it is not produced it decreases serially with time correct the efficacy decreases serially with time hence booster is needed every three years okay every three years we need a booster so the three years cumulative efficacy is around 55 percent okay whereas the conjugate vaccine 50 to 70 percent is its efficacy and since it is a conjugate vaccine it does provide long-term immunity and as to how long it is still the trials are going on since it has recently been introduced okay coming to the schedule still it has not been included under the national immunization schedule but under iap it usually recommends to give the conjugate vaccine because just one single dose is enough and no need of further booster doses and it can provide long-term immunity and it can be given in younger age as well so the minimum age for polysaccharide antigen as we all know is two years and for conjugate vaccine when it if given when it can be given as as early as six months even at six months it can provide good zero conversion rates so we can minimum ages from six months for conjugate vaccine okay now the schedule of polysaccharide is one single dose at two years and booster dose every three years is recommended okay but most of this are now recommending to give this conjugate vaccine and this is given as a single dose at nine months along with mmr okay so it can be given with mmr and there is no reduction in efficacy of both the vaccines when given together okay and again previously a booster was recommended at two years but the recent acvip guidelines tells that there is no booster needed okay just one single dose at nine months is enough catch-up vaccination it is recommended throughout the adolescent period 
up to a maximum of 18 years okay now coming to the last point about the adverse effect following immunization okay it is almost the same for both the polysaccharide and conjugate vaccine it is pain at injection site okay mild pain and includes swelling at the injection site and fever okay contraindication for both will be hypersensitivity to any of the vaccine components and yeah that's it about in this session okay so thank you guys bye bye